Okay, I've got something really special for you today. This is basically part of the Frontier supercomputer. Not really, not exactly, but this is like half a node of the Frontier supercomputer in terms of compute capability. And this chassis is from Supermicro. We're gonna do a deep dive, take a look at our setup. I've got it on the table here. Normally this is gonna be in a data center. We'll get to that. But I did a full teardown of this with Gamers Nexus to show the hardware. This is two nodes in two U. This is a full self-contained compute node with three instinct MI210 GPUs, dual 100 gig ethernet, dual 10 gig ethernet for the interface, up to a 64 core and two terabytes of memory CPU, AMD Epic configuration. This is a monster, monster machine. So if it's two nodes and two U, the question is, and sort of hinted at from the title of this video, is one U is dead. But I just pulled this node out. <gasps> There's another node just like this one in this chassis. This is, looks like a one U server to me. It doesn't look to me like one U is dead at all. And yet, this doesn't have a redundant power supply on its own. It doesn't have any cooling fans whatsoever. Those are in the front. Our fan modules look something like this. This is two rack units of height, 1U versus 2U. This has to do with density. This is the changing face of the data center. 1U servers, especially for this kind of density, are basically dead. Counter example. This is a 1U routing platform. It'll hold four three and a half inch drives. This is also from Supermicro. We have redundant power supplies in the back. The power supplies are 400 watts. The power supplies in our 2U2 node super micro system are 2600 watts, 220 only. This will run at 110 or 220. Really, the reason that you do two nodes in 2U like this has to do with efficiency, cooling, and power. If we built a version of this one node supercomputer component that would work in 1U, we're gonna give up a lot of space to the power supplies because you have to have a redundant power supply in one U as well as storage and everything else. There's not really physically enough room. In our two U two node configuration, we still have redundant power supplies, but each power supply powers two nodes. Instead of having four 1200 watt power supplies, we have two 2600 watt power supplies. And believe it or not, that's actually more efficient. Cooling is the other big one. And cooling is really one of the things that I wanted to talk about. You can see that we've got all these tiny, tiny, tiny fans. This is kind of a stand-in for one of our fans. Not really super big. It's hard to get these to move a reasonable volume of air. They're just not physically large enough. They have to spin at such absurd RPMs, they tend not to be very efficient. Even with these, these fans are going to be uncomfortably loud, as you'll see in a minute. But this design is necessary to cool back-to-back high-performance 300-watt GPUs. Doing something like this compute node in 1U borders on engineering impossibility. Or, I mean, it's possible, but it's not worth the expense and headache. And let's be honest. For something like this, you're not deploying this system for maximum density. This is not a dense system, meaning that you're constrained on physical space. This system is also probably not a system that you would buy unless you are constrained on physical space. You don't want your machine to take up a lot of room. It's also true that the world has kind of moved on over the last 10 years in terms of software. Software has gotten very, very good about being able to run on distributed systems. You don't really have a single mission critical server anymore. There are some cases in the enterprise where you might have a mission critical appliance, which is from a specific vendor, but generally, when I'm talking about rack mount servers that have been configured for your application or your particular setup, they're cattle. They're not really special. And so you don't really give up much having two nodes in a single U like this. Even if both of these nodes are for different customers, something goes wrong. Look, I can pull it out while the system is running and do any kind of service or maintenance that I need to this node, and then I can reinsert it into the chassis. You don't really give up anything. If one of the power supplies die, it's gonna keep both nodes running just fine. A rack mount 2600 super micro power supply, also hot swap. As I'm swapping the power supply, my neighbor in the neighboring node 
uh, is also going to lose its redundant power, but who cares? It's only gonna lose redundant power for just a moment. So from an engineering perspective, putting two 1U nodes in a chassis like this really helps on efficiency, really helps on cooling because you can use a cooling solution like this instead of very absurdly tiny 1U fans. And you still pretty much tick all the boxes in terms of density. I mean, you can deploy GPUs like this. These are, these are full height GPUs in, a, in the context of a 1U server. But even using, you know, four of these fans at the front here to try to move air through these GPUs, these little fans are going to struggle to build up enough airflow and air pressure in order to move all of the air through both of these GPUs carrying a sufficient amount of heat with it. That's just the physics of the situation. And I think data center customers are getting sort of clued into that. You know, in the past, if you ran, say, a hosting facility, there was a lot of sense in deploying a whole bunch of 1U servers because you never know how a customer might come along and say, I want this, I want that, I want whatever. You want to pack in as many customers as physically possible. This design still lets you do that, but it gives you some power efficiency because you physically have fewer power supplies and that's more efficient, but you still have a lot of redundancy because you've got two power supplies every two U in your rack configuration. And you've got maximum density because this is a pretty good amount of real estate that you have for your motherboard. This is a pretty good amount of real estate that you have to have DIMMs in your processor. And you've got three full height, full length expansion slots all crammed in one U. It's very, very impressive. Supermicro has done an incredible amount of engineering for this. And even at the front, we've got four U.2, U.3 drives, <laughs> one for each node. So if you just wanted to swap a node, your storage is still going to be there. Although we do have onboard M.2. Now I did a full teardown of this chassis with Steve. Check that out on the Gamers Nexus channel. I'll try to link that below if you want to see more about the innards and how this works. For now, let's go get this rack. <laughs> also, pro tip when you're racking one of these, you can take out the nodes. But yeah, Steve's teardown. Definitely think you'll find that appealing. We do do that here. So this is NEMA 6, 220 volts. This is a twist lock connector. It doesn't have to be twist lock, but you know, NEMA 6 is 220, NEMA 5 is, or yeah, 220, 240. NEMA 5 is, you know, 110. So this is what we need to connect our system. <laughs> this is an older, an older power cord, but hey, what are you gonna do? It's fine. It's gonna plug into our Eaton 9000. It's a 220 volt UPS uninterruptible power supply. It's about the only uninterruptible power supply I have that can handle this system. And it's just the one system on this UPS. So, whew, nice. It's over 9,000. And it's gonna go all the way up there. Right there. Right here? Yeah. And then wait, let me get some more stuff. Boop. Boop. It's glorious.
And that is why I think One U servers are basically going away for any kind of remotely dense installation. There's going to be so few people buying One U rack servers in volume that they'll probably just go away except for specialty, like half depth communications type applications. If you notice this One U rack machine from Supermicro, also not super deep. And they actually have one that's even shorter. I mean, we're talking a depth of like 12, 14, 18 inches. That's just used for communications. You don't even have physical drive storage. I mean, these are nice one use servers, don't get me wrong, but you're not gonna be packing in a 300 watt GPU and a 300 watt CPU and another 300 watt GPU and a 100 watt network interface card in something like this. It's just, you're gonna need the full depth, first of all. If you need the full depth, why don't you just go up another rack unit? It'll be a little bit easier from an engineering perspective. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This has been a quick look at the 2114 DNR from Supermicro, linked below. Please click the link and check it out. It helps me out. If you have any questions or you're thinking about deploying a whole, a whole gaggle of these, a whole murder of servers, a gaggle of servers, a school of servers, what would be a fun plural of servers? <laughs> you can let me know in the forums at Level 1 Text. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.